Numerical Computation, Chapter 10, Video 7. In this video, we look at um, Neumann boundary conditions. So Neumann boundary conditions is when um, the derivative of the unknown is given at the boundary, not the unknown itself. So for example, we now consider the Poisson equation in 1D, that is um, u double prime equals to some function of x, right? u prime at 0 is a, and u1 is b. So notice that this new type of boundary condition, okay, it's given in the derivatives of the unknown. Okay, so let's set up uniform grid. You fix an n, total number of points, h is 1 over n, and xi is your grid points, and we denote ui to be the approximation of u at xi. So this is a standard um, notation. So here the difference um, between this and the Dirichlet boundary condition is that now u0 is an unknown because we don't know it. The value of u at x0 is not given. That's something we need to find. Okay. And the other boundary condition, un equals to b, is a Dirichlet type, and that actually gives us the value u capital N. And now um, we set up the finite um, difference scheme. So for the second derivative, we throw in the standard central finite difference, and it shall equal to the right-hand side, which now is Poisson equation, so it's some something, some function of xi. Multiply both sides by h squared, getting rid of the denominator. I have this one. And this equation holds for i equals to 1, 2, and all the way to n minus 1. Okay, so we need to deal with the um, boundary condition at zero. So let's do some discussion. So we know we put in a central finite difference approximation for u double prime, and that one is second order. And we now want to approximate the boundary condition u prime by some finite difference. And you would want to do it also in the second order to match the order of the approximation of the equation. So a natural choice will be using the central finite difference for u prime. That's a second order method. But then if we do so, it will require information at x at negative h, which we don't have. So a standard way to handle this will be we add an additional grid point outside the domain. We call this x negative 1, which is just x0 minus h, which is negative h in our problem. Since this point actually doesn't really exist, it's not part of my domain, it's just like set up for the convenience and later on we'll get rid of it. And we call such a point a ghost boundary. A very scary name, huh? So we now write u negative 1 is the approximation of u at x minus 1. We can now write out a central finite difference for the boundary condition. So u prime at 0 now is approximated by u1 minus u negative 1 divided by 2h equals to a. And I can write u minus 1 in terms of the others, that's what I will have. You can move 2a over here and then move u1 over and change the sign. And now we assume that the Poisson equation also holds exactly at x equals to 0 and a teeny bit outside. Okay, So we can write out the Poisson, discrete version of the Poisson equation at i equals to 0. So I have u negative 1 minus 2u0 plus u1 equals to h squared f at x0. 
what we can do now will be plug in equation 3, the u negative 1 here, into the u negative 1 in equation 4. So we will plug this expression here for this u negative 1 term. Okay, And then we have the following. u1 minus 2 uha, that's the plug-in, plus this equals to that, that's the remaining of the equation. And we see we could um, combine the two u1 terms and move this term to the right-hand side because it's theta, and we get this equation. And we see this is the equation for i equals to 0. Okay, so for i bigger than 0, i equals to 1, 2, 3, and we can simply use the discrete equation. Since the last equation touches the boundary, we give it a little special treatment, and that gives me u and minus 2, minus 2u and plus 1. There will be a plus un term, which we know is b. We move to the right-hand side, and we have minus b. So equation 5, equation 6, and plus the discrete equation for Poisson equation, would give us again, we see, um, a tridiagonal system. Let's see. So, collecting all those equations we have set up, we now have n equations, because now u0 is unknown. I have still a tridiagonal system. Okay, so for the first equation, u0, we use the equation where i equals to 0. And that's the left-hand side, and this is the right-hand side. And then for the remaining, this is actually the same as um, um, what we had for um, Dirichlet boundary condition. And then, of course, in the last equation, you have a minus b, which comes from the Dirichlet boundary condition. Okay, so um, let me remark. So this one is coming from the Neumann boundary condition, and this is from the Dirichlet boundary condition on the right. So, um, a final remark. Now, if I shall have a Neumann boundary condition also at x equal to 1, it can be treated in a completely similar way. Then you will have to add a ghost boundary point, xm plus 1, which is xm plus h. So, we'll not provide the details here. We encourage the student to work out the detail and just play around with it and be very comfortable Okay, hope um, that was good and you enjoyed it and see you next time.